Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and I've got Jeff Clark on the line with me, the Senior Precious Metals Analyst from GoldSilver.com, and he's going to go over some of the most frequently asked questions that precious metals investors or especially newcomers have. So, Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. It's great to be back with you again. And yes, we do get a lot of questions from uh, our customers, of course, and we've gotten a, a, a lot more recently because of the increased demand in gold and silver. And so one of the uh, biggest questions we're getting from newcomers, people new to goldsilver.com, is how do I start? What do I buy? Uh, if you didn't own anything in the current environment, Mike, what would you start buying? How would you do that uh, for accumulating gold and silver? Well, for me, I make sure that uh, I take a physical position first. And then uh, you can add mining stocks and so on later. I stay away from the ETFs and uh, any uh, futures, anything that has to do with the commodities exchange. <laughs> There's fishy stuff going on there, I think. And uh, uh, so... I mean, what do you do? Well, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I'm all about owning only physical. I, I don't want to own a paper product in this particular environment. There may be other times in history where owning a paper product might be okay, but the risk right now is so much higher. And so I'm only wanting to own physical in this particular environment. Um, we've already seen... Uh, GDX and GDXJ, those are mining stock ETFs for producers and juniors respectively. And they actually, the price temporarily separated from their underlying components uh, for a short period in March during that big sell-off. The, the fund actually sold off more than the underlying components did. So that was very disconcerting to the holders of those funds at the time. Um, so that's just one example of how a paper product may not actually keep up with what the true price of an asset is. And I could easily see that happening uh, in, a, in a, you know, turbulent environment ahead for a paper gold ETF as well. So I only want to own physical and I like having a mix of both gold and silver. Yeah, I also like uh, smaller increments on them. Uh, you know, I don't own any kilo bars or 10 ounce bars. Uh, on gold, I've got one ounce bars. And then uh, the vast majority of uh, my position is in one ounce silver products. Uh, and I do have hundred, some 100 ounce bars of silver. Uh, but uh, I don't buy anything over the, I think silver is going to be triple digits one day. And, uh, um, and if you want to sell just a, a little bit, uh, you can't when you've got a hundred ounce, you know, when, if you've got a thousand ounce commodities exchange bar plus premiums. Uh, if we're going through a consolidation here, a consolidation phase where uh, gold and silver possibly will go sideways a little. We don't know. I mean, it could, they could just explode to the moon. They could uh, uh, fall and do a bit of more of a pullback. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping for a consolidation phase. And then premiums come back down as, you know, when, whenever there's a rush, the, you can tell that the commodities chain exchange and the, the ETFs are a bunch of hocus pocus because uh, the price of real physical that, that, uh, that you can buy and hold diverges so much from the spot price that the commodities exchange is making. So on a consolidation, that's a good time. That's when I want to add to my position is when premiums come down because, uh, you know, um, during the price spike uh, last week or a couple weeks ago, uh, premiums went pretty big but not nearly as big as they went back in the crash of 2008 or uh, back in, you know, in March, there was uh, uh, some big premiums. Uh, there are times when it's just really hard to source precious metals. Uh, that's a good point. And I also want to highlight the point you made about buying in smaller denominations, because what you want to think of is what you're going to use this metal for and when you actually go to sell it. If you need just to buy some groceries for the week, 
and all you have is a kilo gold bar, well, now you've got to liquidate the entire bar just to go to the grocery store for that week. So uh, you do want to have it in smaller denominations because it's simply more practical. And so it, that's uh, probably good advice even for high net worth uh, investors. Uh, you want to have at least some in smaller denominations because it might serve a very practical purpose at some point. So, Mike, I want to sneak in. Uh, oh, did you have something? Else? Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that uh, I haven't done is um, when I moved to Puerto Rico, uh, I liquidated my holdings and then repurchased and uh, the so that I could set a new cost basis. I had to be out of precious metals for 30 days. Um, and we have tax exemptions here that I qualified for. Uh, so I, I liquidated everything. And when I repurchased, I just, I repurchased fewer items. I didn't have the variety of items that I used to have, but I used to have, uh, uh, you know, thousand dollar face value of dimes, uh, quarters, half dollars and silver dollars bags, uh, of them. And I do want to get some dimes again, but you know, the premiums on them are especially, uh, whenever there's a run-up or a pullback, the premiums can explode sometimes. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that there's a consolidation phase here uh, because if there is, premiums shrink and it's a, a great time to be dollar cost averaging in. And, uh, you know, there's a couple, of, I normally don't buy any gold at, at uh, these uh, high gold silver ratios with the gold silver ratio over uh, 70. But uh, I have a tube of gold eagles and there's only 12 in it and I want the thing to be full. <laughs> so right. I got to buy some gold eagles. And these are just, uh, you know, these aren't the things that I keep uh, at my storage holdings. Uh, the vast majority of what I own uh, is in storage because it's safe it's insured and it's highly liquid uh, and it's not very expensive to store. So anyway, so what's the uh, next main question that viewers have? Well, I was just going to highlight uh, something for you real quick. Our most popular products are the mint cases of uh, Silver Eagle. So the 500 ounce mint case and the 100 ounce silver bars. Uh, those two products in particular are among the most popular that are purchased by, by our customers. So that uh, is maybe a good place for someone to start. That happens to be the majority of my holdings. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Except, and by the um, way, we do have a very good guide on our website. It's called the Complete Guide to Buying Gold and Silver. So it's a great introduction, great starter guide for someone who's just getting started about what to buy, why to buy, and why you might want to consider having it in storage and getting it out of the house, getting it out of the house uh, in the current environment, in the environment we see ahead. Yeah, I like having it highly liquid. Brinks is a uh, private company. It's not part of the banking system. Uh, during the uh, week of 9-11, when all of the banks were closed, uh, Brinks was still open and still delivering metals. Uh, it, it's insured. There's guys with guns guarding it, uh, and it's, uh, you can instantly sell, sell it back and turn it into cash. So when we get to the peak, things are going to be moving fast. Like you said, volatility is going to go up, and you, you, you don't want to have the majority of your holdings. If you want to try and sort of catch something near that peak, you really need to be able to sell it instantly, not uh, to have to ship it back to uh, some, you know, a dealer or whatever and, and uh, wait for it. You want to lock in a price right now, which you can do at goldsilver.com. Uh, but so what are the other questions that uh, viewers have? Well, that's a good point. I just want to highlight that as well is that, you know, when you have a storage account, you don't have to drive there and go pick it up and then go find a dealer. You can literally just log on and in a few clicks, you can lock in your price and sell, as Mike has said, and the proceeds can be on their way to you within a relatively short period of time. So, and all the while the metal's been out of your house and it's been safe and secure. So we do like that option. Uh, so it's something for someone to consider, at least for part of their metal holdings. Yeah, for me, when I sold some stocks, it took 
a lot longer for that cash to get into my account than it did for than it does for gold silver to uh, you know when you uh, make a sale from a storage account uh, you get your cash back into your bank account much quicker than selling stocks at you know I've I've got a Merrill Lynch account and uh, I was surprised at how long it took. Yes, it's it's very quick. So it, it's very efficient. We have the system down and it's in place. Uh, so it's there for someone to use as they need it, even on a moment's notice, if that becomes the case. So, well, this is a great topic, Mike. Thanks for weighing in on this. And we'll catch you on the next video. Thank you. Okay, thanks.